Hello, we are back. It is week one, lesson four, and this is grade 11 ELA unit six. We made it. We are at the end of this week's series of lessons, and we have done a lot of hard work. I'm Elisa Ruffin with Leading Educators. I've been walking you through um, the first weeks of lesson, the first week of lessons for unit six. Uh, so let's take a look at what we've been doing so far, shall we? So day one. Again, vocabulary, summary, reflection, day two, we did a close read. We talked about the theme. You did some artwork. Day three, you did some analysis, responding to questions, rewriting the ending. And now we are on day four. We're going to be talking about analyzing craft and structure. And you're going to be looking at responding to a prompt, using a quick write, and giving some advice to authors. So we're going to start with our riddle first before we launch really deep. Um, into this uh, analyze craft and structure, but let's let's get those brains going today, shall we? All right, so you know what we do every day. We make sure that we get going with this riddle. So today's riddle is as follows. I'm giving you a minute to gather your people around in case this has become a thing for you. I really hope it has been because it can be fun. All right, ready? Here we go. What has to be broken before you can use it? Now, this is one of the shorter riddles, actually the shortest one all week, and yet not as obvious as you think. What has to be broken before you can use it? Take a minute, pause. Here comes the spoiler and the answer. An egg, all right? Now, you may be thinking, well, if I boil an egg, I don't have to break it. But you have to break the shell even when it's done. Nobody's eating an eggshell. So, yes, you have to break an egg before you can use it. That is our riddle of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the last one for this week. So next time we're together, it may be a riddle. It may be trivia. Either way, it's going to get you thinking. So moving on, what you need for today. You need your old man in the bridge text. You need your learning packet. You need the lesson for a note catcher. This time, though, you're going to need, in addition to today's note catcher, your annotations and note catchers from days one through three. They're going to be tremendously helpful. So make sure you have those handy. A pen or pencil and a smartphone um, or device is optional as usual. Our lesson four overview, again, we're doing analyze, craft, and structure our targets for today. I can explain how the author uses descriptive language and dialogue to help the plot, characters, and themes of the story. All of those things are things you've been annotating, which is why I tell you to go get your annotations from a couple days ago. I can describe the impact that the author's representation of the characters in the story has on the reader. Again, you've been comparing and contrasting author's representation um, in your activities. You're gonna reread, probably skim at this point, Old Man at the Bridge. Your think activity is a question. What has reading this story taught you about how a fictional character or characters respond to life-changing news? That question should seem familiar from day one. It's one of those guiding questions for the entire unit. So we're not just talking about stories and plots. We're talking about how stories in general, fictional and non-fictional characters, uh, respond to things. Remember the idea of the human condition. So you're going to talk with your family member, caregiver, or friend about specific examples from the story that support your answer from the think section. So if you're thinking about how characters respond to life-changing news, provide some specific examples in the text. By now you should be used to me saying that. In the right portion of this particular lesson, you're gonna write a five to seven sentence response um, to the prompt, what has reading this story taught you about how a fictional character or characters respond uh, to life-changing news. That should sound familiar because you just had that discussion with someone in the talk section. And then finally, as a close, you're gonna reflect on what makes a fictional character believable and realistic, all right? So what are the things that an author does, a writer does, to really make a character seem real? Like you can connect to them, you feel like you have shared experiences, you understand their emotion, their reaction, they're like a real person. What is it about that portrayal that makes it such, okay? And so you're gonna think about those things you're going to record your answer in the note catcher, and then you're going to turn it into an advice to writers. Basically, hey, if you're an author and you want people to believe the characters that you're writing, 
here are some things that I suggest, right? So really think about the characters that come to life for you. Okay, so as usual, I'm gonna quick model how you can respond to some of the craft and structure uh, prompts for this lesson. So in the think talk section, it's asking you, what has reading this story taught you about how a fictional character or characters respond to life-changing news? Include evidence in the text. So for this question, first I need to take a step back and examine the characters again. I can go back to my annotations. I can go back to my compare contrast from yesterday. But this time, the only thing I'm looking at is how they react um, to the major conflict in the story. All right, so, so the major action in the story both characters are involved in the same conflict, okay? They're experiencing similar scenarios. And how are they responding? I'm going to kind of hyper-focus on those things, okay? And then I am thinking about how their lives have been completely turned upside down. And I'm going to ask myself, how did the old man at the bridge respond to his circumstances? What about the soldier? So I'm going to think about this is a total upheaval when you're at war. It's a civil war. The country is torn apart. You have two people here who have different roles to play, but dealing with the same circumstance. How did they react? All right. So comparing and contrasting those characters yesterday will really, really help you there. The other thing to think about, like I said before, is I can go back to my annotations and look at the dialogue that I've highlighted and put um, in the margins with my quotations, the things that I've underlined. I can also, again, look at my uh, note catchers from the previous days and my compare and contrast. These are all good places to, to start when I'm thinking about this question. And then I'm going to flesh out my thinking or kind of clarify my thinking any more, even more by talking to someone about it. Because when I talk to someone about it, they can pose questions to me that make me clarify even further. It forces me to explain more and really think my answers through. So that is the power of doing the talk sections. So let me show you what it looks like to go back to some annotations that we've already done. So again, the beauty of having done my work earlier is I can cite myself. So I'm going to pull up a um, annotation that we did together in the close read. All right. So remember, this was found on page 755 of the text. I had to circle, draw and write. And it started at line 28. All of these things are relevant to the question being asked. And so I can go back and look at what the old man is doing. I was talking about how maybe he was in shock. And by the time I've read this, I've read it three times now. So I'm pretty sure that's it. I've, I've looked at the, the tone of um, the soldier and just the body language of the old man. And this is really going to allow me to get a mental picture. Um, and with that mental picture, attach words to exactly how a fictional character, character um, can react to life changing news. Okay, so what I'd like you to do right now um, is to do the same thing. I want you to go back to your notes from your previous lessons. You can start with the first read and work your way all the way to analyze. And I want you to pause this video and review. Think about what information can you use, you know, maybe put a mark next to it, maybe jot down some notes um, so that you, when you come back to the video and you have to do the next step, you already have the information that you plan on using. But again, keep the question in mind as you start sifting through all of your notes so you can pick what's relevant. So that is how I would make my way to an answer for that question. So pause the video right here. I'm going to give you a moment to do so. And then we'll pick up where we left off when you return. OK. All right. Go for it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you went through those notes and you found them helpful and you were able to complete um, your kind of curation or pulling together all of your your notes and annotations and the relevant excerpts from your note catcher so that you can really tackle this question in front of you right so again the question was what has reading the story taught you about how a fictional character or characters respond to life-changing news include evidence from the text you just spent the past few minutes gathering that evidence so that should be something um, that comes fairly easily the next thing that you're going to need to do here is a quick write. All right. This is the write section of your lesson plan today. And a quick write is just going to be, you know, five to seven sentence response to the prompt that we just talked about. 
right? So you talked about it, you thought about it, you reviewed your annotations, now you're gonna write about this same prompt. And the reason why I wanted to take some time here is I wanna make sure that when you respond, that you have a framework or an outline for how you can organize all this wonderful information that you gathered. So first of all, decide what is your main idea before you put pen or pencil to paper in the quick write section of your note catcher. What is your main idea? So get another piece of paper, sketch this out. This is the one step that many writers forget to do. They get a question for a writing, whether it's a time writing or in-class writing, and they just start going without really mapping out where you're going next. Creating this quick outline is gonna make sure you stay on point, focused, um, and you get your point across and, and do your thoughts justice, right? So first things first, what is your main idea? Your main idea is gonna be the direct answer to the question. And then you're going to start providing support for that. So first I learned that. So this is the first lesson that you learn. And then I'm going to provide an example. For example, in the text, right? Next, I learned that. And then I'm going to provide an example in the text. Maybe I even use language like on page 755, paragraph two. And then your third lesson is optional. I'm not saying you have to have three, but if you did, finally, I learned that. And then you can say, later in the text is the way that you can introduce uh, that evidence from the text. And then finally, you're going to have a conclusion where you briefly recap your ideas and, you know, end on a really thought thought provoking, you know, idea, something to kind of clinch um, your thoughts there and, and just really leave the person reading impressed by all of your brilliance, which I'm sure you will. So again, use this framework to get you going uh, so that you can finish this quick write. And then make sure that you're recording all of your answers in the right spot. So again, your think and talk, um, you're going to do, and then you're going to write your quick write in the quick write section, and then your reflection. Again, as I talked to you about at the beginning of the video, you're gonna reflect on what makes a fictional character believable and realistic, and then come up with some advice that you would give an author for making their characters more real. And so I want you to think about text that you've either read previously where the characters just really connected with you and this can be something that you've read in the class this year or even on your own um, or even the text from this particular lesson think about the things that made the old man come alive and the soldier come alive and and how they captured the human condition I remember we talked about that the other thing that you can think about to help uh, make it relevant to you is think about a movie character that you found really really realistic and what was it about that character how did they behave how did they talk how were they portrayed that's what you're really looking at how they were portrayed the decisions that were made by the writers and the directors to characterize right that's the literary term they characterize that particular character to give them a personality so think about those things write down a list and then create a brief um, piece of advice you know Here's a list. If you're writing a story and you want your characters to be realistic, here are some things that you can do. And that's your closer for today. So we've come to the end of week one, lesson four, bravo. And we are at the end of Old Man at the Bridge. When we come back uh, for week two, we're starting a new text called Everyday Use by writer Alice Walker. If you are familiar with her work at all, she also wrote Color Purple. I'm really excited about this one. There's a lot of really great stuff to talk about that I know all of you guys are going to identify with and looking forward to the thoughts that you have about those things. So in the meantime, do that extra work, do those remaining activities um, and finish strong. You're going to be great.